Hi, I'm Tortellini. Here's the meta news report for patch 7.35b. Hero guides are updated again with 677 changes, a bump from the 1,988 changes made in December. Let's check in on the meta weather for the top heroes to play in patch 7.35b. Hey, okay, let's do this. Uh, let's start with the carries. Faces Void continues to be one of the most popular and safest heroes to play this patch, just like last patch, as the hero has such a reliable ultimate ability, fits in almost any lineup or any tempo, uh, whether it's quick games or late game stretches and the hero hasn't really changed the previous patches so Really the only thing that's changed except is the popularity of Meta style as another way of breaking out common debuffs like silences and roots But also useful to confuse enemies during chronosphere when they want to single target you with a disable during your chronosphere um, So really I just updated the hero build to have Meta style come before BKB and adding in Disperser as a luxury items um, so Slark is another popular carry right now because he plays really well with Mage Slayer as well as late game potential with Disperser giving him even more uh, maneuverability that makes catching him incredibly difficult for enemies. Uh, the only real change for Slark in this patch is he no longer really buys Echo Saber and instead opts for the Mage Slayer and still builds the popular Ag Scepter, Shard and Diffusal Blade. Uh, this means that the hero not only tears down a lot of magic heroes with Mage Slayer, but is also dealing a lot of periodic damage from that item. On top of the Diffusal Blade, sapping their mana, and has two pounces to jump in and out of fights, as well as his Shadow Dance ultimate ability and his shard, Depth Shroud, which makes the hero incredibly slippery. Once he gets that Disperser, he now has an extra boost of movement, another Dispel, and can slow enemies in an AoE around him with the same active component of Disperser. So really, Slark is just an all-around incredible hero, has a little bit of magic resist thanks to the Mage Slayer, and it's just really, really hard to kind of keep down unless you massively focus him down quickly and try and burst him within that realm of possibility. Now, if you haven't noticed already, Lina is a really popular position one hero, like she was kind of like before. She can still do this as a position two mid hero, but position one is the more popular version of this hero. The reasons are mostly around the change in Maelstrom and Glypnir, now giving more attack speed for the hero early on, which helps her early game. Her attack range has always been astronomically high, which makes laning with her incredibly easy as you can punish most offlaners with ease and from afar, so retaliation is kind of unlikely. So for the build for her at the position 1 is the same as before, Magic Wand and Falcon Blade to maximize your stats to help with last hitting and harassment as you just saw here, as well as building into Maelstrom to uh, make farming quicker and combined with your Fiery Souls. Now just a heads up, um, the guide system itself doesn't allow me to recommend stats after you max Fiery Souls and Light Strike Array, but you generally you want to put stats instead of putting points into Dragon Slave. We mostly rely on the low mana cost of level 1 Dragon Slave to keep your Fiery Souls, uh, keep your fiery souls stacks up without blowing all your mana. So when it comes to clinks, he doesn't really have the most successful uh, number in terms of win rate, but the new Clink's carry build is the current way to play the hero. The addition of Conda, changes to Bloodthorn, and the loss of armor reduction in Solar Crest has pushed the hero uh, to become kind of a menacing carry. Um, similar to how he was a support, your early, er, your early points in Tar Bomb to guarantee last hits and harass offlaners combined with your comfort in quick gold and health using Death Pack means you can easily play with the lane and or go to jungle if the lane is pushed into dangerous territories. Um, the build kind of plays around similar as the support build around your timing for Desolator where once you pick it up you do a quick round of ganks with it, um, take some tier 1 towers before you start farming up the rest of your build, Dragonlance for additional range, uh, Orchid if you feel it's necessary, and uh, Bloodthorn. Bloodthorn combined with the army you make of Skeleton Walk and attack speed of strength means you are dealing fast range magical and physical damage that is also true strike. Now think about Kanda as your late game critical damage with a nice slow and it applies a 1x your damage on the spot which is a really really nice touch. Um, so in terms of build changes, besides what I mentioned, I've separated your late game choices by priority. Kanda, Bloodthorn, Nullifier, and Scythe as the general items you'll need in most matches. Whereas Hurricane Pike, MKB, Eye of Scotty, Butterfly, and Daedalus are items that may not be as necessary to consider but could be good follow ups. Let's move on for mid laners. There are a few good ones for you to look out for. Number one is, as you can see here, Ember Spirit is back from the grave in 7.35b, and it's all thanks to Shiva's Guard and Mage Slayer. You just saw it there. 
Those two items have boosted Ember Spirit into a top tier pick because of its absolute insane output and debuff it applies to her enemies. With Shiva's Guard, as you saw, following Ember Spirit during Slate of Fist, just like Flame Guard, on top of the Mage Slayer passive that deals DPS, it's really no wonder that Ember Spirit has become such a popular uh, pick for pro players. Massive damage and an AoE risk with little risk for the hero. Uh, I've updated the skill build to max out Flame Guard, uh, so you can just farm jungle camps during the laning stage when it's pushed to the enemy side, as well as pushed out um, Black King Bar and Ag Shard to extension items to prioritize the need for Mage Slayer and Shiva's Guard in your core items. Um, so not as successful as Ember Spirit in pro games, but Outworld Destroyer is messing up enemies hard. Um, though I continue to maintain the Ag Scepter is an incredibly strong upgraded version of Aeon Disc, it's just the addition of what you're seeing now, the uh, Parasma in 7.35, that seems to have awakened this Outworld Destroyer's inner overpoweredness by reducing enemies' magic resistance by 20%, gives True Strike, and thanks to Witchblade, gives one more thing Outworld Destroyer loves, mana in the form of intelligence. So you see here, Outworld Destroyer is incredibly powerful because its output is consistently strong from the mid game, to uh, its late game with its pure damage auto attack arcane orb that farms and scales easily into that late game. Uh, with Ag Scepter, BKB, or Shard, the hero has pretty much three get out of GL cards when caught out and with the upgrade to Parasma, OD can pretty much establish a late game presence with strong damage. Um, so speaking of Parasma, Puck is also on the board for similar reasons. Fantastic damage by an easy to build item called Parasma. Puck has always been a glass cannon that shoots herself uh, into a fight with Grace Initiation called her ultimate, as you just saw. Uh, really, uh, it, it likes to build Ag Shard to give bonus magic damage, auto attack to opponents caught in her Dream Coil combined with the Witch Blade and its souped up version of Parasma. Uh, the timing in which she has this increased damage is what makes her so powerful, as it'll achieve its core items build by around 30 minutes. Now we're talking about offlaners, my preferred uh, role. Doom is back on the board, even after Hand of Minus and Nocturne Core nerfs. The hero hasn't really stopped its presence in the offlane, especially with the new changes to Veil of Discord and Shiva's Guard. It's always an item he's wanted, but was put on the back seat for more important items like Bling Dagger and Black King Bar. Now that Shiva's Guard um, is kind of convenient to help him farm combined with Scorched Earth, um, it makes more sense to pick it up first. Scorched Earth is actually one of the reasons uh, the hero is still such a strong offlaner as it contributes massively to his presence uh, as well as his farming capabilities. Um, so just a heads up, I've updated the Dooms build to no longer require the Hand of Midas as a core item since Veil and Shiva's Guard has taken its place as your farming complementary build. Helm of the Iron Will is picked up really early at the start of the laning stage to give you kind of that unmatched armor and regeneration uh, to really focus on dominating the lane. Uh, most of us have been sleeping on Enigma, but actually the hero is in a really good place thanks to Vladimir's offering. It had its items recently cost reduced, making it easily attainable for a lot of heroes like Mars, Tidehunter, and as you're seeing here, Enigma. Now Enigma really synergizes with its item because his demonic summoning of Edelins, which you're seeing here, costs both health and mana. But once you have Vladimir's offering, that excessive cost um, is basically forgotten. What's wild about Enigma is its lane dominance. Um, he could rely on the jungle camps to build up Edelins and then use that to guarantee less hits, denies, and bullies a lot of safe laning carries out of the lane easily. Uh, so I updated my Enigma build to include Vladimir's Offering as a core item with Enigma, and then the standard Blink Black King Bar. And then Enigma's late game items now include the popular Shiva's Guard, Boots of Bearing for your units, and Positioning Movement, as well as I've added in Octarine Core as a natural good item. Um, at some point or another, you die to Abaddon. You're about to see it here. The hero is in an incredible place, both to his great laning, which has been uh, a thing, but in recent patches, they have been buffing Curse of the Avernus to make it deal DPS after it procs on an enemy, as well as increasing the DPS to 80 and level at level 15. Uh, this pretty much brought Abaddon back to life and to its, his original offlane position. Uh, this time, though, no Radiance. It's just your standard Echo Saber, Harpoon, and Manta style into whatever you like. Um, the Harpoon is basically to grab into enemies and then start up your Curse of the Avernus, which is double stacked up with the Echo Saber. And then the Harpoon, uh, excuse me, and the Manta style is to help you split push also for great dispels, as well as the fact that you have um, Aphotic Shield to dispel any real debuffs that are annoying you. So great hero, probably the easiest to rec I would recommend for offlane. Definitely try him out. Uh, one of my favorite heroes, Darkseer, um, another hero benefiting from the Veil of Discord buff, but also the Arcane Boots change. 
Uh, Darkseer has always been kind of a great hero, but his landing stage in previous patches was a little muddy. With items you previously needed to survive in the lane, like Vanguard, Null Talismans to give you a bit more mana, and more. Uh, now his hero build has you picking up Arena Bazi early on for some great mana regen to spam Iron Shell in the lane. And then Veil for both the regeneration and armor of the Helm of the Iron Will uh, also helps you a lot with the Star ability. So no longer needing the Vanguard or any other, the other small items like uh, Null Talisman. Um, not to mention Veil of Discord also combos well with your vacuum into Wall of Replica initiation, especially when you upgrade it to Shiva's Guard. Um, so in my build, I've opted to put Guardian Greaves and Pipe of Insight on the back seat because Shiva's Guard leads Darkseer to be more aggressive than an Aura Carrier, hence, hence why we see Ag Scepter and Black King Bar uh, to kind of help set a new tempo that's much quicker than relying or waiting on Wall of Replica. Um, you can pick both those items up, uh, specifically the Pipe or Guardian Greaves, at any point in the game as they are incredibly good for Darkseer. Uh, lastly, Viper is my personal pick for off laning. Wait, hold up. Watch this insta kill. Boom. Oh, beautiful. The hero is the definition of great laning and the addition of Mage Slayer as well as the Shiva's Guard have rejuvenated the hero, especially as the age of tanky off laners has died out, which has made room for Viper to come in. Uh, Viper's change of moving his break to his ultimate ability and giving Nether Toxin on slow means countering common physical carries like PA or Sven is much more efficient and effective from level 6 onwards since it cannot be countered with BKB. Uh, what's especially strong with Mage Slayer, Magic Resist combos really well with your Corrosive Skin and it totally gives you like 65% Magic Resist on top of your standard Magic Resistance you get as the hero. Um, so I've completely revised the build um, where there's now two standard core builds. One is your typical um, Pike with Mage Slayer and there's now a core alternative build which revolves around Veil and Shiva's Guard into Mage Slayer and Ag Scepter for the great disarm debuff. And by the way, I also changed his level 10 and 15 talents. Uh, they now recommend going all in with Corrosive Skin. Uh, for supports, uh, Nature's Prophet is still king of the land as the hero has somehow managed to adapt out of needing solo crest and now just opts for capitalizing on his ganks with Spirit Vessel, Sprout. is also still as annoying as ever and the build hasn't really changed all that much. Uh, neither has the playstyle of the hero which builds upon your teleport to gank around the map with the extra damage and armor and relying on Sprout to harass and control your lane. So really, Nature's Prophet doesn't really need more to say besides what I'm saying now in that uh, he plays pretty much the same way except instead of relying on solo crest to tear down your opponents you're relying on spirit vessel to help kind of finish them off really standard hero all right chen players as much as people love to roam and gank with nature's prophet chen is also in a really good spot as a strong support hero since the vladimir's buff um offering or vladimir's offering buff has really made his early game output and presence very powerful with the right um coordinated team Though most public players won't really engage with this micro-centric hero, at the highest level of matches, Chen is seeing a lot of success since level 1 in your um, Divine Favor now gives incredible armor and how well it combines with the increased healing that Chen offers with his ultimate. Um, so I changed the build for Vladimir's offering um, to be included for Chen as your first item and I put in Drum for engagement. Uh, Pipe of Insight. Uh, to keep your creeps alive against magic burst damage and as well throwing in a shard and boots of bearing as your follow-ups uh, Somehow tree protector has prevailed once more as a reliable support the hero has been nerfed in 7.35 But not enough to warrant what makes him so strong great maneuverability Since nature's grasp acts like trees for your nature's guys and now we're rushing ag shard So you immediately get the root bonus of two seconds as the game acts like those vines are trees, as you just saw right there. Uh, I've updated the build only slightly by throwing in a wind lace as your starting items for the extra movement. Uh, that should be above most heroes as um, as well as I've also added uh, Vladimir's offering late game. And I've moved Lotus Orb and Force Staff in there too. Okay, forget everything you know about Lion before. Now it's all about the mana drain. It slows, it sucks mana from the enemy lane, it has huge range, and now it deals damage. Uh, who knows what Valve was thinking of this hero. Just know that this is the way to play him now, and it's incredibly annoying and frustrating. This is the one best entry level support hero to play this patch, and I deeply recommend him. Okay, lightning round because this video is already taking too long. Be on the lookout for these up and coming trends of popular hero builds. 
First one is Batrider as a position four or five was a thing for a minute last year and it comes back with a vengeance uh, with Blink Dagger and Boots Bearing. The hero is all about his ultimate ability, so why bother giving him a dedicated core like a mid laner? Once the laning stage is over as a support, the hero farms very quickly with stacked camps and Firefly around the jungle and can get his Blink Dagger at a decent time, giving your lineup good ganking capabilities into the mid lane. Speaking of which, Bounty Hunter um, as a position 2 mid laner is really hot stuff. I personally have experienced it and freaking hate it. Uh, Kanda has given this useless position 4 hero uh, some actual legs as a core mid laner. As we can see, most people also just straight up pick up Ag Scepter. That said, with Phase Boots, Janata, and Kanda or Ag Scepter, you have a hero that can hit fast, hard, and gank at an incredible rate and capitalize on that rate with very quick gold gains with his track to build into that very Ag Scepter I just mentioned. Uh, or you can build a conda if you don't feel like uh, the acceptor is the way to go Moving on here. Let's talk about another loving uh, conda user tiny tiny um, Plays well into tiny's buffs into 7.35 7.35b where his grow does bonus toss damage even more now and avalanche has also been buffed You can actually tree throw now with conda and it'll do incredible damage as we talked about with a variety of other heroes uh, Vengeful Spirit, this is actually, I'm going to do a video on this one later on, but Vengeful Spirit, um, off lane, but specifically the one build from Monkeys Forever. Big fan of his, love his stream, check it out. Um, it's really simple, it's Double Bracer into Treads, into Scepter, into Solo Crest, and Vladimir's Offering. Now, you're probably confused as to how these items kind of synergize together. Real quickly, the level 20 talent that you are rec being recommended is misleading in its text. It says, Wave of Terror steals 20% of reduced damage and armor. What does the hell does that mean? But what it actually means is that Wave of Terror grants Vengeful Spirit 20% of the affected unit's total damage and total armor. Also, her level 10 talent, which says plus 200 nether swap enemy damage, it doesn't say that that means you get more shield as well as the more damage you deal when you swap the enemy with your ultimate ability. Um, you also get more shield from that combined with the solo crest and that makes Vengeful Spirit very very tanky and don't forget she gets another shield and another huge nether swap nuke since all her abilities refresh when she dies with Agonim Scepter. There's a lot to kind of deconstruct there uh, when it comes to offlane Vengeful Spirit so take a look at his stream uh, sometime or stay tuned for my next video or a video whenever I get around to that. Moving on here, let's talk about Broodmother. Broodmother, I was going to make a guide about this, but I'm sure they're going to nerf it really quick. It's called the Commander build for Broodmother. It's not that popular because Broodmother is kind of a cheesy pick, but it is the way to play Broodmother. Broodmother rush like a machine gun for Bloodthorn. Um, basically how it works is that you get your early game items, then you rush for Bloodthorn, where you can cast on an enemy from afar, and then just send your spiders to do all the damage at no risk for yourself. Uh, or for the hero, Bloodthorn now deals 60 bonus magic damage per attack. So all those spiders you've saved up in your little piggy bank are going to become uh, very useful in when it comes to slaying enemies. And lastly, this is a very standard build now. It's the Vladimir's Offering Con the build for Morphling. It's kind of the return to the shotgun Ethereal Blade Morphling that we saw years ago. Uh, seeing a lot of Morphlings pick up Vladimir's Offering instead of uh, the similarly priced Falcon Blade and Morbid Mask. It's a little weaker in the early game, but it is way more valuable throughout the match and can be disassembled to make Satanic and Kanda. That's it for me. More videos every week and catch me on my Twitch, uh, continuing to test all your favorite builds every day. Check in game for the latest versions and don't forget to support me by liking the channel and sharing all this crap.